Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle, and in this March Mystery Madness video, I am going to continue with my Sleuth by Type series. It's been really interesting to kind of dive into specific types of sleuths. And so for today's video, I looked at clerics, clerical sleuths. So this means people who are somehow involved in in a church. So pastors, vicars, um, priests, nuns, monks, um, all, all of that. Um, that includes imams, rabbis, all, all of that. So, and I discovered that there's actually quite a lot of um, sleuths at, that are clerics. And so, um, it, because they are clerics, they are also necessarily amateur sleuths. And as I did my investigating, I discovered that there are quite a lot in the historical mystery subgenre, quite a lot. And that is, unsurprisingly, if you know my channel, the bulk of the ones that I want to show you today. But I also found there were, there were some in the vintage or golden age mystery subgenre. There are um, cozy ones, and then uh, I just called them others because they're not cozies. But I didn't really know. <laughs> I didn't really know how to classify them. Let's dive in. We are going to start with historical. Um, clerical sleuths and I decided to go by time period I'm starting with the earliest and moving forward in time so first up we have sister Fidelma this is a series written by <clears throat> Peter Tremaine and it is set in 664 Ireland so very, very early, Sister Fidelma is with the Celtic Church and she is joined by Brother Edolf, who is with the Roman Church. So there are uh, actually two different clerical sleuths in this series, but the, the main one is Sister Fidelma. Absolution by Murder is the first in this series from 1994. And there are 34 books in this series. So it's actually quite a long series. I enjoyed it. I haven't read the entire series, but there was a time um, years ago when I kind of was just devouring this series. I really did enjoy it. I loved how early it was at 664, um, made it just such a fascinating time period. And I also loved that it was set in Ireland. Okay, next up, we have Eleanor, Prioress of Tyndall. This is set in 11th century East Anglia in England, and these, the series is written by Priscilla Royal. The first book in the series is called Wine of Violence from 2004, and there are 16 in the series. So our main character, the sleuth, as it were, is the prioress of an abbey and um, <clears throat> Tyndall Priory. I really enjoy this series as well. Um, what's interesting about this one is that the Priory is one of those that had both monks and nuns. And um, so that kind of adds a level of interest. Usually if you're in a, a, you know, an abbey or a Priory or, or a monastery, it's just monks or it's just nuns. And so it adds another level of conflict and interest to the stories. Um, but yeah, um, Eleanor, Prioress Eleanor is, um, is an interesting character and I do enjoy this series as well. This series, I would, I would say this is on the grittier side, but definitely an early time period wise, <laughs> clerical sleuth. Okay, <clears throat> next up, is another one is this is from the 12th century and this is abbess hellwise um it is set in hawken isle abbey in england during the 12th century fortune like the moon is the first book in the series from 1999 and there are 17 in the series this is not one that i have read although i have read 
Some Mysteries by Alice Clare, and I did really enjoy them. Okay, so I haven't read this series, so I don't know too much about Abbess Hellowise as a sleuth, but it's one that I discovered. And also from the 12th century, we have the Brother Cadfell series by Ellis Peters. Um, this is a series set in the 12th century. Um, Brother Cadfell is a monk in Shrewsbury. A Morbid Taste for Bones is the first book in the series. And that came out in 1977, and there were 21 books in the series. I love this series. This is a fantastic series. Brother Cadfell is an interesting character. He, um, he joined uh, the monastery later in life, so he has a past. He was off fighting in crusades, etc. Um, so he's a fighting monk, as it were. But now he is the herbalist at um, Shrewsbury Abbey, and gets himself involved um, sleuthing. And I really I really do like Brother, Brother Cadfell. He is um, thoughtful and kind and um, interested in the world. And um, yeah, it's a great series and he is a great clerical sleuth. Okay, and then from the 14th century, we have The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. This was published in 1980. This is set in an Italian monastery in 1327. I have not read this either. This has been sitting on my shelf for years, and I don't know why I haven't read it. Partly, it could be the size is a little bit intimidating, although not really. It's only just over 600 pages. But, um, maybe because it's been translated. I don't really know why I haven't picked this up yet. Um, but the name of the rose is set in a modern monastery and definitely has clerical sleuths. There's a murderer loose in the abbey. Enter the labyrinth, unravel the mystery. You will never look at death or life in quite the same way again. Look at the back. That's pretty good too, actually. So let's see what this description is. The year is 1327. Franciscans is a wealthy Italian abbey, sorry. Franciscans in a wealthy Italian abbey are suspected of heresy and an English brother, William of Baskerville, is sent to investigate. His delicate mission is suddenly overshadowed by seven bizarre murders that take place in seven days and nights of apocalyptic terror. One monk is found dead in a cask of pig's blood blood. Another is discovered floating in a bathhouse. Still another has been crushed to death after falling from a window. Rumors hum throughout the abbey and people piously cover their tracks, hiding clues. Brother William turns detective and a uniquely deft one at that. His tools are the logic of Aristotle, the theology of Aquinas, the empirical insights of Roger Bacon, all sharpened by a glistening edge of wry humor and ferocious curiosity. He collects evidence, deciphers secret symbols and coded manuscripts, and digs into the eerie secret labyrinth of Abbey life. Before his task is completed, Brother William witnesses crimes beyond his imaginings and meets an enemy with the awesome features of the Antichrist. Wow. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Why haven't I read this yet? <laughs> okay, continuing in the 14th century, we have the Brother Athelstan series by Paul Doherty. Brother Athelstan is a Dominican monk in 14th century London. The Nightingale, Nightingale Gallery is the first in the series from 1991, and there are 20 in the series. I've read a number of them, and I really like Brother Athelstan. So he is, um, he is a Dominican monk, and his church is right in London. So you get a lot of that. So he's not a cloistered monk, he's out and about in the world. And I, I really like that, um, that idea. I also love that the series is actually called The, Sorrowf the Sorrowful Mysteries of Brother Athelstan. <laughs> he, he is, like I said, out and about in the world. Um, he's kind of in charge of a church in London, he's got a parish and gets himself involved. And then there is a, what's his job? 
Sir John Cranston is the some sort of official investigator um, and so the two of them work together quite often so yes I really enjoy this series so if you if you're looking for a, a clerical sleuth in the 14th century kind of right in the thick of things in London then this could be one for you to check out continuing in the 14th century we have sister Frivies um, in Oxfordshire she is a nun in 14th century Oxfordshire this series is written by Margaret Fraser the first one is called the novices tale from 1992 and there are 17 in the series the series is the the Dame Frivies medieval mysteries and I have only read I think one in this series but I've been collecting them and I have quite a lot and I want to just keep keep going with this series she she is her nunnery or whatever is called St. Friedswides and um, in Oxfordshire so that's fantastic I love that as a setting as well still in the 14th century we have brother Michael from the the series the Chronicles of Matthew Bartholomew by Susanna Gregory so the main character in this series is actually Matthew Bartholomew, but Brother Michael plays a key role in this series, and he is the clerical sleuth um, alongside of um, Matthew Bartholomew, who is a physician. Um, and so I read a couple in this series as well. The first one in the series is A Plague on Both Your Houses from 1996, and there are 23 in the series. This is another... This is another great one. In the tradition of Ellis Peters, a plague on both your houses introduces the physician Matthew Bartholomew, whose unorthodox but effective treatment of his patients frequently draws accusations of heresy from his more traditional colleagues. Besides his practice, Bartholomew is teaching of, is teacher of medicine at Michael House, part of the fledgling University of Cambridge. In 1348, the inhabitants of Cambridge live under the shadows of a terrible pestilence that has ravaged Europe and is traveling relentlessly eastward towards England. Bartholomew, however, is distracted by the sudden and inexplicable death of the master of Mickelhouse, a death the university authorities do not want investigated. So Brother Michael isn't actually talked about on the back of this one, but like I said, he is, he kind of partners up with Matthew in this series. Okay. And then one more from the 14th century. This seems to be really popular for um, clerical sleuths is The Abbess of Moe. And this is a series written by Cassandra Clark. It's the late 14th century in York. The first one in the series is Hangman Blind from 2008. And there are 11 in the series. This is the Red Velvet Turn Shoe. And I believe it's the second... This is the second one in the series. Black February 1383, the rain swept throughout Europe, bringing floods, famine, and the horror of the Black Death. Into this ravaged world made worse by the Hundred Years' War, the nun Hildegard embarks on a quest to find the legendary cross of Constantine. Beset by danger on all sides, she needs every shred of courage and skill to survive. With the English crown at stake, powerful forces desire her downfall, and one man, above all, plans deadly retribution. So, what is it about the 14th century? I think um, we're at the height of the medieval time period, and religion plays such a key role in society that it makes sense to have a clerical sleuth. And I think that's why we have so many in the historical mystery category. I mean, that was five in the 14th century. All right, let's move on and talk about Joanna Stafford in the series by Nancy Bilyeu. She is an aristocratic nun in the 1530s. The Crown is the first one in the series from 2012, and there are three of them, so it's technically a trilogy, I guess. She is a Dominican novice, and um, but an aristocrat with ties to the royal family. 
And so it's during the, the time of King Henry VIII. So it's a Tudor era clerical sleuth mystery. And I really like this series as well. Okay, and now we are heading to 19th century Russia with the Sister Pelagia series by Boris Akunin. Uh, Sister Pelagia and the White Bulldog from, is from 2000. That's the first one in the series. And again, there are three. So it's a trilogy unless he decides to write more. This is Pelagia and the Black Monk, which is the second one in the series. She is bespeckled, freckled, woefully clumsy, and possessed of a not very nunnish talent for solving crimes. Um, and so I have not read this series yet, but I really want to. And I picked up this one and the third one in the series at a book sale, like really cheap at a book sale. I got it for a dollar. So I'm excited to try these. And so she is a 19th century Russian nun. Uh, so definitely counts as a clerical sleuth, and I'm excited to give that series a try. <clears throat> okay, and then one more in the historical mystery category, and that is the Reverend Mother Aquinas in the series by Cora Harrison. This series is set in 1920s Cork in Ireland, and I've read the first one in this series, and I did really enjoy it, but like with a lot of things, it just got lost by the wayside and I forgot about the series, but I definitely want to continue on with this series. The first one is A Shameful Murder from 2015 and there are nine in the series. So she is the Reverend Mother at a convent in Cork. Um, and yeah, like I said, I really did enjoy the first in this series. I think 1920s Ireland is a fascinating time period to set it in, and she was a great amateur sleuth. So that's a series that I need to pick up again. Okay, moving on to some vintage era clerical sleuths. We have Father Brown by G.K. Chesterton. You had to know this was coming. <laughs> Father Brown is a Catholic priest who is more interested in saving souls than solving crimes, although he does end up solving a lot of crimes. <laughs> there are five collections of short stories between 1911 and 1935. There are no full length novels. There are only short stories. So it's really easy to check him out. Uh, read a few short stories and see if Father Brown is, is something that you like and then you can pick up a collection. I love this edition that I found. This is a Dell edition of The Amazing Adventures of Father Brown from 1935. This edition is from 1935. I love it. Agatha Christie says, always one of my favorite sleuths, one of the few figures in detective fiction who can be enjoyed whether you are a detective fan or no. Ellery Queen says, one of the few characters in all fiction who is likely to survive the fickle years. And the New York Times says, he stands high among the very small list of really great detectives. And to read mystery stories which have the qualities of literature is of course a rich and rare treat. So yes, Father Brown had to be mentioned in a video about clerical sleuths. Okay, let's move on to some cozy mysteries that I found. This is a long series that I um, have not actually read any from, but I have seen them around. And this is the Sister Mary Helen series, written by Sister Carol Ann Omery. The main character, Sister Mary Helen, is 75, and she is a retired nun in San Francisco. The first book in the series came out in 1984. So there you have it. A nun writing about a nun. And uh, so yeah, I think that's great. So yeah, so if you're looking for uh, a, a clerical sleuth on the cozy side of things, you might want to check out Sister Mary Helen. And this next one, I, I think it's a cozy, but 
I'm not entirely sure, so I'm, I'm kind of moving into the other category. But this is Father Tom Christmas. This series was is written by C.C. Benison. Um, Father Tom is the uh, vicar in an English village. Twelve Drummers Drumming from 2011 is the first book in the series. And there are three, um, as well as a... Uh, a fourth but it's a short story or a novella so yeah he is he is a vicar um, it's him and his daughter who move to this village um, but according to Julia Spencer Fleming he is an irresistible addition to the ranks of clerical sleuths so there you go Father Tom Christmas is a recently widowed vicar adjusting to life in the English village of Thornfield Regis so there you have it. And while I'm thinking about it, I can't believe I didn't put this on my list because I just re read it. But another um, kind of on the cozy side of things, clerical sleuths, we have Murder Before Even Song. And I just read that one and now I'm completely blanking on the name of the vicar in that one. Um, but that one is another one like the sister, like this one. Um, it's about a vicar written by a vicar. I, I will put it up here on the screen so that you can see it. That is a, a brand new um, first in the series, but definitely counts as a clerical sleuth as well. Okay, and then we have Father Dowling. Um, he is a Catholic priest in Chicago, and there are 29 in this series written by Ralph McKierney. Death, her Death of Cole is the first in this series, written in 1977, and there are 29 in the series. I have not read any of these, but I do have one on my shelves. I couldn't find it, <laughs> so that's why I'm just showing a picture up here. Father Dowling, the Father Dowling series was also made into a TV show featuring Tom Bosley, who played in Murder, She Wrote. So that's very fun. So there you have it, um, a Catholic priest, but this time in Chicago. And then last but not least is the Sister Joan series by Veronica Black. A Vow of Silence from 1990 is the first in the series. There are 11 and Sister Joan is part of a convent in Cornwall. I love that. I've read A Vow of Silence and it was pretty good. This one is farther along in the series. But yeah, um, I love the setting of Cornwall for, for a series and Sister Joan, um, Sister Joan definitely counts as a clerical sleuth. Okay, so that's all that I have, although I know that there are many, many more. I also know that I did not include, I, because I didn't find any, where an imam is the sleuth or a rabbi is the sleuth. So if you know of any, please put them in the comment section down below because I would love to learn about more clerical sleuths. Also, if you have a favorite clerical sleuth, please tell me about it in the comment section down below as well. And I will see you for another video soon. Bye.